we realise this is a kind of wartime. I think Australia's approach is quite similar to what China has done. During this pandemic, we've seen acts of discrimination towards Chinese people and towards Asians. I've heard as many stories about kindly acts between people of different races, different backgrounds. They don't get the same attention as the spectacular story. 这段时间呢，疫情在澳大利亚的发展也是越来越严重。那为了控制疫情的蔓延呢，从上个月的二十号开始，澳大利亚政府就禁止外国人入境，同时呢，也陆续出台了一些措施，比如说关闭公共场所，比如图书馆、公共海滩、酒吧、电影院等等。那面对来势汹汹的疫情，热爱阳光和沙滩的澳大利亚人，他们又准备好了吗？ So we see the number of new cases in Australia going up. How do you evaluate the Australian government's current control and prevention measures, and how are the ordinary Australian people doing? So the curve is going up very steeply from a low base. The biggest risk, which I think China is also facing, is people coming in from other parts of the world. Australians coming home. No, people are traumatised. I think it's a sense of dread or fear because this is an unknown. We've not known this in our lifetimes, even those who've been alive for a long time.、Uh, but on the other hand, there's a lot of calm and a lot of goodwill and a lot of good deeds. People looking after each other, looking out for each other. And the government's been very clear in its signals, its messaging, communication. And I think we realise this is a kind of wartime. We have to act as if we are at war with the foreign devil. Now we see a lot of European countries are following China's decisive control measures recently. Right, we've seen a slight shift in their attitude. Do you think that sort of、um, tough controlling and prevention measures can that be adopted、uh, by Australia as well? Yeah, I think Australia's approach is quite similar to what China has done. I would hope that our government has learned lessons from the Chinese experience. But I think it's been a model effort, a heroic effort by the Chinese government and the Chinese people for people to sacrifice their liberties so quickly for the greater good.、Uh, it's a very Chinese characteristic, of course, that the community or society matters. All governments probably should have taken measures sooner on this, and I think we're seeing many governments responding a little late. It's very important we get ahead of the curve, and China can offer many, many good lessons and models about how to do that. China will come out first, and therefore there's a fantastic opportunity for China to lead in a number of ways, not just in health services and emergency, but in terms of how we rebuild a resilient and sustainable global economy. 
let's be practical when we can be, but in the meantime, let's communicate like this so we can actually keep systems running. But my intention is, as soon as it's safe to do so, I would like to be in China, and I would like China to take a leading role in the international system about saying, how do we rebuild the global recovery? Let's bring the best brains from around the world, when it's safe to do so, to Beijing, to talk about how we rebuild a more resilient and sustainable global system. That's my commitment. I'll be ready as soon as your government says it's safe to do so.